Our story this week is a melodrama which takes us to a remote and mysterious island. You'll meet some strange and intriguing characters, bound together by the sea and their frantic search for truth. In just one moment, The Haven. At first, there was so much to see. Africa was more exciting than ever. A whole continent struggling to be reborn, to be master of its own destiny. I got great stuff for the book. Brought back a stack of notes for you to type. It'll be a good one. Perhaps my best. I... Here I am, rushing on about my book. Where's Jimbo? I can't wait to read that first draft of his. Did he get a kick out of working here at the old man's desk? I'll lay 11 to 5. He passes me in the stretch. Look at the jump he's got. A novel at 23. I think I care more about Jim's first novel than all seven of mine put together. Will. You never thought I'd plow through that wild sea out there, did you? Good thing I left the motor locks in storage on the mainland. No sloop could survive those gale force winds. I waited till morning, but no longer. That's how bad I wanted to get back to Jim and you. Well! Jim took the sloop last night. Set out for the mainland. In a sea like that? A little while ago, young Matt Daly found the wreckage of a sloop washed up on the beach. It was Jim's boat, but there was no sign of Jim. Coast Guard might have picked him up, and Ben has a search party out for him. Will, Will, wait for me. Why'd you let him have the boat? He knew how wild the sea was. Oh, you left the boat with him. Well, he's a grown man, and I'm not his mother. You're my wife. You should have watched out for my son. Mr. Mitchell, we searched every inch of the beach. The boy's a wonderful swimmer. Why didn't you stop him? I can't check on every man on this island. Maybe he made shore and headed for the old beach house. Why would he go there? Well, he, he took quite a fancy to it this summer. That's where I was heading, just to make sure. to the beach. 
beach house, ma'am. Jimmy? <laughs> what are you doing here? Cleaning for Jim. Cook just food. You mean he's been living here? This shack? He wanted to write here. You always told him that you wrote your first important novel here. All I see is his typewriter. Where's the first draft of that novel of his? <laughs> Daily, my wife says you found the wreckage of my boy's boat. I have no cause to like you, Mr. Mitchell. My pa was drowned off your fancy boat when you wanted to take it out that day. There were storm warnings, but you wanted to fish. I grew up hating you. But I never wanted this to happen. We found him, Mr. Mitchell. He's alive? No, sir. <laughs> Drove up. Will. Will, do we have to do this? Let's leave the island now. Please. I'm afraid, Will. Please, let's go away together. You've got to forget what's happened. And Mrs. Mitchell. Dr. Abel. I appreciate you not objecting to us holding the uh, inquest here in the tavern. But we hold all of our village meetings yes, here. Yes, that's all the... right. Yes, uh, well, uh, Mr. Mitchell, if you don't mind, you and your wife can sit down over here. Thank you. Now, uh, we all know why we're here. This isn't exactly a formal inquest, but Mr. Mitchell has seen fit to question some portions of my coroner's investigation. And as your select man, your doctor and your coroner, I will preside over the meeting. Uh, Mr. Ben Fuller, our constable, will swear in each of the witnesses. We'll start with my own autopsy report. The sum of it being that death was caused by drowning. And due to certain circumstances created by the sloop being swamped during the storm, there was a slight fracture of the skull sustained in a minute before the drowning. This could have been caused when the victim struck his head in the side of the boat or in some other undetermined manner. Now, I uh, understand that Mr. Mitchell is considerably disturbed because we haven't investigated his son's movements on the night of the unfortunate accident. Maybe you people think I'm some sort of crank a troublemaker who isn't satisfied to put on a black armband and follow his son's coffin to the grave. That's not the way I live. I learned to look at life hard and straight, right into the heart of it, into the truth of it. That's the way I've tried to live and write. That's why I'm here now. Find the truth about my son, how he died, what killed him. 
Only a fool would take a sloop out on a night like that. My son was no fool. I want to know why. Why he went out on that boat. Dr. Abel neglected to mention one significant paragraph in his autopsy report. I don't know whether he thought he was sparing my feelings or the good name of my son or what, but I want him to read that section. Well, it doesn't say much, just that I found a considerable quantity of alcohol in the victim's stomach. Yes. Yet I've never known my son to take a drink. Never. If he was drunk that night, I want to know why. Where'd he get it? Fitz, was my son in here that night? He was. Then you're the one responsible for... Mr. Mitchell, if you wish to question Mr. Fitz further... I think we should follow the proper procedure and have him sworn in. By all means, let us follow proper procedure. Mr. Fitz. Put your hand on the Bible, Fitz. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? How do you? Sit down. Was that night the first time my son had been in your place? No, sir, it wasn't. How many other times? Well, if it hadn't been here, it'd have been someplace else. You knew about his drinking? Yes. I tried to talk to him, but all he'd say was that if he wanted to drink a little, it was his business. He couldn't write with people breathing down his neck. What could I do, Will? Yes, what could you do? Who was here with him that night? Who'd he drink with? Nobody. Just came in. Sat over there in the corner by herself like he always did. Didn't speak to anybody. Just came in, took a drink, and left. Well, she come and got him after a bit. She? Who's she? Adam Tyler's girl, Carolyn. What did she have to do with Jim? Well, uh, she, uh... Come to get him to try to stop drinking, I guess, and go back to the beach house with her. He was living there with her? Well, I don't... I wouldn't know. You kept the truth from me about the girl, everything. All those letters, not one word about what was happening to Jim. I knew you'd be coming home soon. I hoped he'd change. And I did try to stop him. You tried. You never cared enough. Where is she, this Carolyn? Why isn't she here? You all know something. You're trying to hide something from me. I want to know what happened here that night. Fitz, you were here. You tell me. Mr. Mitchell, there's just no point in... Tell me, Fitz. You swore on the Bible to tell the whole truth. That's what I want, Fitz. Now! Jim got into a fight. Who with? Matt Daly. Sure, we got into a fight. I had a good reason. Your son took my girl away from me. Mr. Mitchell, your son's death was an accident. Ben Fuller saw him take that boat out. Did he? I read his statement. He said he saw Jimmy go into the boathouse. He didn't pay too much attention because he thought Jimmy was going in to check the moorings on the boats. The next thing he knew, about ten minutes later, he spotted the sloop about a hundred yards or more off the shore. That right, Ben? Yes, sir. A hundred yards away, a wild sea, rain, gale force winds. How could you see anything at a hundred yards in conditions like that? I saw that boat. But not my son at the tiller. Now, Mr. Mitchell, you're letting your emotions go too far. My son is dead. I mean to find out who killed him. Will. Yes, killed him. Murder. You expect me to accept your explanation for that fractured skull? Can't you see what happened? Someone hit him. Put him aboard that sloop, unconscious. Set him adrift in that wild sea. Made it look like a drowning. Now, why would anyone want to do that? Matt Daly. Bitter against me because of the death of his father. 
bitter against my son because Jim took his girl from him. Will, you're wrong. I know that boy. Ben, I demand that you arrest Matt Daly for the murder of my son. Doc? All right, Matt. Come on. doing here? Mr. Mitchell's got it in his head. Matt killed his son. You've got to help him get away. But what can I do? Mr. Mitchell's powerboat. You know where the keys are. He can reach the mainland, hide out somewhere. Carolyn, you were with Jimmy all the time that night before he took the boat out. You know what happened to him, don't you? There's so much... I just don't understand. When you love someone so much. Oh, God. I knew, I knew something would happen. Karen, I'm sorry. I know how you feel. But you must tell me the truth now. It's very important to me that I know the truth. If I'll tell you the truth, will you help me? Yes, yes, of course I'll help you. secretly on the mainland, a month after you left. Married? That half-starved little island girl? There's no sense to it. Our marriage? That didn't make much sense either. Anne! Daly found out they were married. Now I know he killed Jim. I've got to find him. You won't find him, Will. What do you mean? I gave the keys to Matt to your powerboat. He'll, he'll reach the mainland by now. You dared, you... You had something to do with Jim's death. You and Daly, the two of you, that's why you were trying to protect him. I want the truth. Here's your truth. Jimmy left a note. Read it. D. 
dear dad. There's no novel, no first draft, no no... I lied to you in my letters. I can't write worth a damn. I'm sorry I failed you. I've got to get away. I got to find a job on my own somewhere. I can't live on your name and your money forever. Don't worry about me. I'm all right now. Love, Jim. Jimmy was afraid of you. No. He felt he'd let you down because he'd married a half-starved little island girl. Because he didn't write that novel that you expected of him. You said he wanted to be a writer. You wanted him to be a writer. He tried, but he couldn't. If you'd only shown him that... that you were lonely sometimes. That you were afraid of the future. That, that you were afraid of failure. Maybe he wouldn't have torn himself apart feeling he wasn't worthy to be the son of such a great man. He might have been able to talk to you, Will, but he couldn't face you, so. He took that boat and went out into that wild sea, and maybe he was at peace with himself for the first time in his life. I know how he felt. The same fear, the same helpless love. I'm going away, Will. Away from this island, away from here. Away from you. Nearly don't. Stay with me. Don't leave me alone. Stay with me. Don't leave me alone. If you'd only said that before, it might have helped, but it's too late. I'm lost, too, and I've got to find myself again. Our story this week is a melodrama which takes us to a remote and mysterious island. You'll meet some strange and intriguing characters, bound together by the sea and their frantic search for truth. In just one moment, The Haven.
this island, always waiting for me. Oh, you never knew how much I missed you. The months went quickly at first. There was so much to see. Africa was more exciting than ever. A whole continent struggling to be reborn, to be master of its own destiny. I got great stuff for the book. Brought back a stack of notes for you to type. It'll be a good one. Perhaps my best. I... Here I am, rushing on about my book. Where's Jimbo? I can't wait to read that first draft of his. Did he get a kick out of working here at the old man's desk? I'll lay 11 to 5. He passes me in the stretch. Look at the jump he's got. A novel at 23. I think I care more about Jim's first novel than all seven of mine put together. Will? You never thought I'd plow through that wild sea out there, did you? Good thing I left the motor locks in storage on the mainland. No sloop could survive those gale force winds. I waited till morning, but no longer. That's how bad I wanted to get back to Jim and you. Will! Jim took the sloop last night. Set out for the mainland. In a sea like that? A little while ago, young Matt Daly found the wreckage of a sloop washed up on the beach. It was Jim's boat, but there was no sign of Jim. The Coast Guard might have picked him up, and Ben has a search party out for him. Why'd you let him have the boat? Did you have your first important novel here? All I see is his typewriter. Where's the first draft of that novel of his? Daly, my wife says you found the wreckage of my boy's boat. I have no cause to like you, Mr. Mitchell. My pa was drowned off your fancy boat when you wanted to take it out that day. There were storm warnings, but you wanted to fish. I grew up hating you, but I never wanted this to happen. We found him, Mr. Mitchell. He's alive. No, sir. Let's go away together. You've got to forget what's happened. Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell. Dr. Abel. I appreciate you not objecting to us holding the uh, inquest here in the tavern. But we hold all of our village meetings yes, here. Yes, yes, all uh, right. Yes, uh, well, uh, Mr. Mitchell, if you don't mind... You and your wife can sit down over here. Thank you. Now, uh, we all know why we're here. This isn't exactly a formal inquest, but Mr. Mitchell has seen fit to question some portions of my coroner's investigation. And as your select man, your doctor and your coroner, I will preside over the meeting. Mr. Ben Fuller, our constable, will swear in each of the witnesses. 
We'll start with my own autopsy report. The sum of it being that death was caused by drowning. And due to certain circumstances created by the sloop being swamped during the storm, there was a slight fracture of the skull sustained in the minutes before the drowning. This could have been caused when the victim struck his head in the side of the boat or in some other undetermined manner. Now, I uh, understand that Mr. Mitchell is considerably disturbed because we haven't investigated his son's movements on the night of the unfortunate accident. Maybe you people think I'm some sort of crank, a troublemaker who isn't satisfied to put on a black armband and follow his son's coffin to the grave. That's not the way I live. I learned to look at life hard and straight, right into the heart of it, into the truth of it. That's the way I've tried to live and write. That's how wild the sea was. Oh, you left the boat with him. Well, he's a grown man and I'm not his mother. You're my wife. You should have watched out for my son. No, Mr. Mitchell. We searched every inch of the beach. The boy's a wonderful swimmer. Why didn't you stop him? I can't check on every man on this island. Maybe he made shore and headed for the old beach house. Why would he go there? Well, he, he took quite a fancy to it this summer. That's where I was heading, just to make sure. to the beach house, ma'am. Jimmy? <laughs> what are you doing here? Clean for Jim. Cook just food. You mean he's been living here? This shack? He wanted to write here. You always told him that you wrote your